Excuse me. Welcome back here, 2022 NXL World Cup, the Champions Cup, brought to you by Bunker Kings and Maddie Marshall alongside Rich Telford here on Go Sports. And we got another awesome battle going down right now. Top four teams, the San Diego Dynasty taking on the Tontons and Abbots and Impact taking on Houston Heat. So Dynasty was able to prevail barely against Heat. That was a really close game. And then Impact was able to uh, to beat the Tontons also barely as well too. It was one point matches out here. These guys are playing for seeding here. It's the top four teams. Dynasty made it into this bye round because they were able to win two major. And then uh, and it looks like we are also seeing the return of Oliver Lang here for San Diego Dynasty. He got a couple spins out there, did pretty good for him, and it looks like they're gonna get a really good start here against the Tauntauns. Dynasty shooting two bodies here very quickly, Rich. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough match for the Tauntauns to get into if they're starting off each point down one or two bodies. And Dynasty is one of, if not the best team in the world, at shooting on the break and containing the field. Ryan Greenspan shooting out of back center now, moving to the wing on the snake side. Good control position. Looks like he might have shot the guy in front of him in his mirror. No, it looks like the player's okay. Still three on five advantage for Dynasty. Dynasty feeling no pressure here at all. Archie's just kind of sitting back. Eventually he might try to edge himself into the god or edge himself into the corner. No urgency going forward. Tauntauns lose another player now out of back center, another one out of the wedge, and another one out of the, uh, the lay down. So five on zero. I, you know, it might be early to start thinking of Dynasty as one of my dark horses here, but I oh, like the way go. they're playing. I like the way they're putting the field together, and if they keep this up, they might be uh, might be one of my dark horses for sure. Well, Dynasty has shined rich by shooting bodies on the break constantly in his past two years, and they're just they're so good. I mean, at, at, at figuring fields out. They're so good at figuring out, okay, where do we have the best percentage chance of shooting bodies? Where do we feel the flow of the action is gonna go based on what we've seen, the reads we're getting, Inner point, inner turn, tournament, inner game, and uh, and it's really just paying a lot of dividends. They shoot two bodies off the break here for the Tontons, and bam, you know, really worked out. So we're in the pits right now. There's Ollie with Archie and Marcelo. I mean, Jesus, what a lineup, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Dynasty's bringing a bear here at the end of 2022, and, and just for the past couple seasons, and then the new pickups they've had have really also breathed some new life into the squad. So now Impact matching up against Houston Heat. Impact on a roll. You know, talking all this about Dynasty, but Impact's won the past two events. And so... Ah, jumping into this one, though, is Chad at Boucher and Chad George taking the yeah. walk early here for the, Houston Heat. When the, both Chads are taking the walk early, you know it's tough for Houston Heat. Only three players left alive for Houston Heat, and they are all on the drill side of the field. They lose Fedorov, so only two players left alive, both on the drill side of the field. Impact in complete control this first point. Looks like... Fuzzy, I can't tell who got shot there. A little bit sloppy going through the center. Uh, yeah, it's Matt Jackson, Matt and Jackson, then uh, yeah. Fedorov's also coming off too. So just two bodies. One, two. Yeah, just two bodies left arriving out now. Right now for Houston Heat, and they got Dizon, and Dizon, he's going to get shot trying to gunfight from that tower. Just Tyler Harmon, four on one. Really, not much Tyler could do in that situation. Just out of that spot. It's a tough bunker, to, you know, gunfight out when you have to pop over the top. Bart and I had an interesting uh, discussion while we were both in lunch for line about how important winning the first one or two points of each match were and how to control the field afterwards. Bart Yakimek? That's the one. Oh. Well, you guys aren't wrong. <laughs> you guys are not wrong. Also As told him that we complimented him on his 13 person <laughs> coaching staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the uh, impact is, I, well, I don't know if they're how they're going to work it moving on entirely for the event. But so uh, John Jackson, Matt Jackson's brother, has been helping coach out. And, you know, he was a big part of the success of AC Dallas and came up yeah, with BCK. Last, and he's a great events. paintball mind and really helps Dave Baines out. Uh, so that's a good guy to have around. Then I saw both Zach and Zane uh, not geared up and looked like they were helping coach. Yep. And then now we got, obviously, Bart as well, too, and then Big Dave Baines. So, yeah, dude. And they have an embarrassment of riches everywhere. A decent coaching staff. And, yeah, real good coaching staff. So jumping back in to see if Tauntauns can step it up here against Dynasty. Good breakouts for both teams, Matt. Five alive, it looks like, for both teams. Yeah, it looks like a little bit more conservative here for Dynasty. Uh, they're keeping their uh, two in that back center, just doubling it up, keeping bodies in the pocket. They're going to try to get Urena out and Frazier up. Oh, Alex gets caught going up there. That's good zone control here for the Tauntauns. Urena is going to be able to make it into D2. It's 
So Dynasty, four bodies up for them. They have not shot anyone yet. Five bodies currently on the field for the Tauntauns. A lot of time left here. Battle these top teams. There goes Marcelo Margot, gonna filter out wide. D side for Dynasty, makes it out clean. It looks like the push side is the D side for Dynasty. They're gonna look to have Archie hold over here. Blake will to the middle later on and have the major of the push come on that D side. Which is smart because right now, Tauntauns have three gun snake side, only one gun D side, and that's just the back center guy. So they can put that one guy in a go, that'll be huge. Blake catches a kill, cross field as he fills up the center. Ooh, Blake Yarber, Blake, nice little filter up, a little, little lethality out of him. A former MVT, MVP from last year's World Cup. Oh, and Archie catches one though. Oh, and Blake catches one. Two on three advantage here, or two on four advantage for the Tauntauns, Matt. The tables have turned here the for the Tauntauns. Have turned. The tables have turned, and now a couple uh, rep reposition runs as Marcelo goes coast. The, the Tauntauns just let Marcelo fill from the back corner bunker on the D side to the back corner bunker on the snake side. What an awesome time move there from uh, another multiple time MVP award winner, Marcelo Margot. Unfortunately, Mikey takes the walk from the D side now, leaving Marcelo in a four on one. Good point there for the Tauntauns. Yeah, interesting point too and how it shook out, but gonna have ourselves a tie game. With a lot of time left, just getting things going here. I feel like Dynasty might need to bring Oliver in, get back in this game. Well, at the, the last game, I mean, I wasn't keeping perfect track of it because we had a lot of other stuff going on, but- He's lying, guys, he did, was keeping perfect It track. did look like they were playing him every third point. Uh, not religiously, but he got, I think, three spins. Way to break the code, Matt. Way to break well, the code, bro. So, uh, so we'll knows see. Now. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's a big story, right? I mean, yeah, everyone. Huge. Like I've never, I mean, I, you post certain things and get responses from fans in the jobs that we do, but I've never had in the span of 24 hours when our, when he came back had three separate guys in separate parts of the world hit me up and say essentially the same sentence was this warms my heart. You know, like that's really cool. So yeah, there's a lot of people out here in the stands that want to see Oliver play some paintball. Impact snake on the break, getting the check has been eliminated. Four on five advantage here for Houston Heat. Getting a little bright out here. I'm gonna have to get my sunglasses between these next matches. Goldman taking the early walk here for Impact. They're gonna double up the mini wall in the backfield with uh, looks like Laval and Rabikoff, and then Rabikoff's gonna get out to D1. Here comes Heat. They're gonna send Smith into the wedge. Already have a body up into D3. So better field position currently here for Houston Heat. Down by one. Legendary battle. These two teams man just going blow for blow for the past decade. Sometimes it's impact, sometimes it's heat. Most Smith recently, it's been impact. Getting caught on the retreat there. Smith walking off. Four on four now. Very similar field positions. Nobody with a big advantage here, other than impact from winning that first point. Yeah, but in this point right now, it's neither team really has a snake presence. Uh, I mean, Darula is this way, but he's shooting yeah. towards that D side, but he's at the back box, and then both teams he doesn't really have anyone over here. Both teams are playing the flinch game, hoping the other guy flinches, makes a mistake. And now- Because of the release from Tyler. Yeah, Tyler's gonna get into the 50 yard line. D's on to D3, he's been there for a bit. Oh, Tyler goes up the first at the perfect time, and JC catches him. Great shot by JC. Yeah, JC pushing down the drills now, Matt. Goes right into D4, into the 50 yard line. He's looking inside and not feeling any pressure, so he's thinking about wrapping around that 50. Does have to worry about D's on in front of him. Block Nick, that from that angle, though. Nick Laval now moving up to center. He's going to work with JC, try to protect him, look for some kills over the top. Nick has uh, developed quite a few nicknames over the years Nick the Wall, Laval, Nick Snape by Laval. Nick, that's what I like to call him. Nick backing up, see if he's got a better gap. I don't think they know which Dorito he's in though. Because Nick's backing up like he's in the front Dorito and he's in the, the second Dorito. But the, the snake side is completely open now for Impact. At any time, Impact can get the snake, go down and win this point. Talking about Drula? Yeah. Where's he feeling pressure from? I, I mean, he's, he's playing like he's feeling a little bit of pressure. I keep trying to see, his I bunker is being shot. I think his mirror's hot. His bunker's being shot. Yeah, his mirror's hot. Okay, I can't hot. see that, but yeah, I, I, he was playing like someone was hot over here. 
Ronnie goes through, gets the trade. Two on two now, Maddie. Goes from a three on three to a two on two. Impact with slightly better field position with the Dorito 50. No, Impact still got three. Impact oh, has sorry. J, they got JC, yep. uh, J-Rab, and Rula. Yep, three on two advantage now. And again, Impact with a one point advantage. They can just slow roll this, stay in control, not press the issue. Look at the, the, the uh, Dynasty Dragons back. Haven't seen that guy for a while. <laughs> I actually have uh, the jersey that the Dynasty Dragon used to wear in the back in the mid 2000s in my garage right now. And so, no, it's not for sale. It just so you know, guys, everything is for sale. Please DM me. <laughs> I'll do what I need to do to get that T-shirt. Oh, JC coming off for impact here. This is Heat's opportunity. It's Chad George. Look at this. Chad George is running racket over here on the snake side. He comes through and wow, impact's gonna be pissed that they threw this point away. Hey, I tell you what, Chad George's Chad George's ankle looked pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Nice job by Ryan Moorhead and Chad George, one of the dynamic duos on Heat over the years. Four and three, three and four. Yeah, it was a impact through that point away. Had a one body advantage almost the whole time. And let's check in with the return of the third member of our broadcast team, Lauren Kelly, down in the pits. Thanks, Maddie. I was talking to Heat coach Todd Martinez before this match, and of course, going into Friday, Saturday, they want to win these matches, but they're not really feeling too much pressure. What they're really focusing on is testing game plans out and discovering what will work best for them come Sunday. All right. Well, I mean, that's kind of what's all about, right? You know, figure it out what's going to work for Sunday. Man, I say go out and smash people every point, make small adjustments to that. But sure, yeah, if you want to try crazy new things, whatever. But yeah, I mean, you've got to do that, right? Especially if you're playing against team games that you don't care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you also don't want to go lose too many points and get get kind of down on yourself going into your next mm -hmm. matches. Dynasty gets out to the Dorito corner. It's a hard run to get out there. Tauntauns lose two, Matt. Tauntauns lose three, Matt. Only yeah. back center in the Dorito Tower. Dynasty has five. Well, Oliver does get a spin, and he's up in the center right now. And the Tauntauns are coming off in droves here as Dynasty pushing the issue on that D side. They're past the 50-yard line. Wrapping the round. And Dynasty going to put up the point right now as the crowd goes wild here for San Diego Dynasty. is <laughs> Dalton's over there. It's uh, giving him some praise. Yeah, it's just cool, man. Dynasty got a really fun thing going on right now, and they have for 20 years. And they still got it. It's just such a cool story. It's inspiring. If you're out there and you're thinking, man, you know, I'm too old. Can't really do it anymore. I'm 40. Well, the hell, wrong. You, the hell you can't. You're wrong. <laughs> Look at these guys. But also, just because Oliver can do it doesn't mean you can do it. So maybe go to the gym first. Well, but the reason. Maybe a yoga there's, class. There's two reasons that Oliver came back, realistically. And I've talked to him about this. And it's kind of come out in the past month or so. But, you know, he came back because, one, his, his, his very good friends and his teammates for years are still playing elite paintball at 40. And I feel like there's a little bit of the fear of missing out there, right? He, he, he really saw that, hey, man, if they're doing it, I can do it too. And then also the, one of the biggest things too is that all the fans, uh, with the support of Hormesis, and everyone really kind of been talking, like they summoned the genie out of Bali. <laughs> Essentially, they rubbed they rubbed the, they rubbed the, uh, the lamp and uh, Oliver appears because it, it, it's been a very supportive community. I remember when they were like, 40 years old is too old to play paintball, you guys. And now they're like, 40 years old is the new time to play paintball, you guys. Yeah. Tyler taking the walk, heat down to three players, impacting two players into Snake. Axe on the front. Oh. It's like fuzzy backing him up. Sam Monville with a great fill out to the corner. Looks like he got out there clean. Houston Heat with only three players still attacking. Ronnie Dizon catching Heat from across the field. Yeah. Axel got him. It looks like Ronnie got caught in the pack there and still got Moorhead. Over there, Sam Monville, back corner bunker. Yeah, it's either five on two or four on two here, Maddie. Yeah, tie ball game right now, 9.33 to go. Ryan and gets caught there. Only Sam Monville left in the back right corner for Houston Heat. Houston Heat should go ahead and concede this point. Try to give himself some time on the clock. There they go, they do concede. Very tightly contested match here, back and forth. Back and forth, I think we're gonna probably continue to see that. We can hope. We can definitely Stands hope. Stands are almost ex fully packed. On day one. On day one, yeah. I was going to say that's usually that's the Sunday afternoon yeah. crowd. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 we have stands. Yeah. There's VIP more on, stands than ever. Yeah. VIP literally runs the entire length. To of be the fair, field. most of the people here to see uh, Oliver. A few people here to see Matt, but <laughs> most of the guys are here to see Oliver. Everyone's pretty excited. Yeah, 
it's a uh, it's a big moment, man. It's a really cool thing, and and also just combines <laughs> with the fact of you know, Dynasty's run, right? You know, so Dynasty Everything, having this right? amazing run. There's just so many things here, and then. With Impact's recent reemergence, with their crazy year they had with the Saints, well, and everything all is done with the Hormesis as well, right? Yeah, it's just, but it's just a good vibe in paintball in general right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think COVID was really good for paintball. It really was, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> it's Who crazy. knew? Crazy. How I can't wait for the next epidemic. Yeah, and also it did look like they played Oliver in the third point again. So. Yeah. Again, great job cracking that code. Any, any new coaches out it's there? It's really not that big. I was not a big code. Cool. I just thought you were, you know. I can count to three. Yeah. The best yeah. of them. Tauntaun's doing that same kind of conservative pocket breakout, Matt. They really like that. Two, three, four in that center box. Wings shooting snake side. Yeah, it's two to one, but it's just a lot of time left still. Just a little under 11 minutes. The question for the Tauntauns is. As always, when you're playing Dynasty, how do you get through these lanes? You live through the break. This is very difficult when you're playing Dynasty, especially in the past couple of years. And then once you live through the break, well, they're really good at repositioning in the scramble. That's why they win so many close points and win enough close points to be winning the, the, uh, the amount of tournaments they've won, as difficult as it is. Well, Dynasty's good too at suckering you into thinking that you're safe. You know, you, you have a little bit of box around you and you think you're safe and you keep pushing that box out farther and farther and farther. And the second you go past that line, it's not one hit, but it's 15 and you're just blown off the field. And you're like, oh, can't really make that correction. Too and, late. And it's tough, you know, again, with Dynasty, just so many different guys have won MVPs and so many different guys have stepped up in different moments. If they can stay healthy as they've had to fight through some injuries, but everyone's had those moments. Well, how, how much world championship experience is on that team, right? More than anybody. So now making some moves here. Dynasty getting all the way into D4. Dalton. And here goes Marcel is going to get into D1. Yoshi's been posted up, just pumping paint right in front of Dalton. I think that's Dalton. Oh, and he gets the crossfield shot. He's gonna get one. That might be. It has an Alex or uh, Alex sorry. or Dalton. It's, yeah, and then uh, Ryan's looking for it right now. Ryan gets to the 50 after that kill. It's definitely Dalton. Yeah, Dalton's number 24. Ryan goes and right to the can. Good read and react from Ryan to try to finish this off. And then here comes Archie. Archie not feeling any pressure. So the, one of the secrets of the success of Dynasty is that when they're feeling pressure they will hide if they need to. But when they are not feeling pressure, oh, they may run five or six bunkers and take a spot. You're like, oh my God, look at this giant move from Ryan. Look at this field that Marcelo just made. You know, but when you look at why they were able to do that, it's that, that amazing oh high level experienced timing where they can read it like the matrix and figure out exactly what the best case scenario would be for them to make that move in that split second decision. And it's just, when you look at the pressure coming off certain guys and what moves they're making and why. So Dalton goes up, and I just, I love the boxing metaphor because if you're getting jabbed at, you have to deal with that. But then the jab sets up the overhand right, which sets up the left hook. And Dynasty just has that, man. So, you know, Dalton jabs down the D side. And then you have a little bit of an uppercut, even really with, uh, 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 with Ryan moving up the center. Right. And these guns are shifting, and then Archie comes through. You know, it's just, and it's happening so quickly. Yeah, it's orchestrated almost perfectly. He with a standard break go to the center wall. Tyler Harm secondary, so two up to the wall. Two in the two four cut and one in the small Dorito. Impact with two, three, four. That's the tower on the Dorito side, the back center, and the juice box on the snake side. The snake corner, and I'm guessing the Dorito corner, but I can't see it. Five on five for both teams. One te point separates these two teams. Oh, J-Rab taking the walk early for impact off the D side. That's the fourth body I was missing. As Nick Laval releases from the back center, goes to the lay down, looks Dorito side. Houston Heat has a body advantage and a significant field advantage with two at the center 50 and two in attack positions on the Dorito side. Yeah, they're, they're looking really solid here to try to tie this one up. 8.20 on the clock, double dose of attackers up the center with Tyler Harmon shading towards the D side. Chad Boucher shading towards the snake side. So they're just turned it up from there. And it's really putting the, uh, the pinch on Impact. Well, We're playing incredibly tight in their bunkers, but. And now if Heat wins this one and takes the lead, Impact's really got to go back and look at that point that they gave away where they're up on bodies, up on positions and dropped it. And you can see, I mean, Ronnie is at D1 or D2 outside. Yep. I mean, he's just feeling zero, zero pressure. pressure yep. Same with Fedorov. Even in Fedorov at D2, he's out, for, or D3, he's, he's kind of out a little bit and really, none, they're barely getting shot at. 
and so kind of the snake side's the next to go, and then Chad Georges has been locked in this gunfight with uh, mirrored up like with Darula again. And Darula is just on that cut, just sitting there being zoned up, very team-oriented, very uh, job-oriented. But the issue is, is that at a certain point in time, Heat is going to have to move forward, For and sure. Impact is just trying to dial in these zones and, and play as tight as they possibly can, yeah. try not to lose gunfights out of their spots. Yeah, Impact can't drop any bodies at this point. Any one guy in the uh, avalanche probably falls. Yeah. And of course, for both of these teams, this is a great practice point for going into Sunday afternoon and playing the finals. Whether you're up on points and you have to stall, or down on points and have to eat the clock, right? 100%. So and then, that's, and as a coach, that's what I would try to go to have set up for my players so that we don't mentally get into the games. Like, hey, we're just trying to put ourselves in this situation so that we play the way we're supposed to play, so we practice it now, so we execute it perfectly on Sunday. Oh, look at this mouse. Oh, I thought for a second mouse was going to crawl from that back corner, but he uh, got checked back in. Not going to be able to make that move. Yeah. yeah, that would have been a painful lesson, I feel like. <laughs> oh, Houston Heat tries to fill out to the corner of Federoff. He gets caught. I don't know why he would go from there all the way over here instead of just going forward. Really, really long run. Lots of time being burnt off the clock. We're down to 6.20. Four on four now. Still one point spread here for Edmonton Impact, trying to maintain this lead. Two teams are so familiar with themselves or with each other over the years. And themselves. Indeed. They even know Matt. They know some of the refs. I mean, these people know people. And, oh, but Heat pushing that 50, Matty. Three players on the 50 now for Houston Heat. Now past the 50 with Ronnie Dizon getting into Impact's Dorito. He barely made it through that lane, too. <laughs> I was going to say, Ronnie's got to stay alive up there because they're going to pump a lot of paint through that gap. But they're trying to shoot the bounce shot right now yep. with that 50. I see it's, it. not, it's just breaking paint. That's, just, that's what the problem with good paint is it's hard to shoot bounce shots. It's good paint and that bunker's inflated quite a bit. Yeah. So not an ideal situation to get a bounce shot with brittle paint and an overinflated bunker. Yeah, they're talking it up. Everyone, good communication here. And Chad still posted up at the back box, snake side for Houston Heat. Tyler and Chad, George, or Chad Boucher are still up in that center 50. I hope this is not a glimpse into Sunday paint to all, Matthew. It's a longer point, but it's been a little interesting. Definitely been interesting. I mean, it's, yes, Impact has basically dug a trench and said, all right, we'll come into the guns, right? We're just going to build some foxholes here. And, and this is a good feel for it. With so many bunkers on the D side, so few on the snake side, there's uh, quite a few dominant gaps out there. Communication's really good out there from both teams. Talking about watching the center, icing the center, not letting players from the team fill up through the center. Ronnie to their side on of the field. getting shot. He's past the 50. He was on impact side, but you know, he was catching a lot of pressure from there. It's a really tough spot to live in. You're gonna catch a lot of pressure. No one else was really pushing the issue other than Ronnie. Uh, and you know, still 430 to work with, only down by one, so a little bit of a tough death in there, but, but this was a five on four, right? And now it's a three on four. Opportunity squandered by Houston Heat, and great job by Impact. I mean, Impact is just so good in these situations. All the top teams, the reason why the te elite teams are elite is because if they have to play fast, they can play fast. They can score a, a seven, 12 second point. Um, if they need to dig a foxhole and play slow, and uh, they can do that. They win gunfights, they play well in the scramble, they shoot bodies on the break. All of the, the little things are done behind the scenes to get them to the point where they have all their equipment dialed. All those, everything's there, right? So if you if you lack any of those things, it's gonna be a really hard time for you to win tournaments. That's what, yeah, and that's another thing that makes an elite team is finding the things that you lack and using their skills to exploit those things that you lack, right? Oh, you can't play slow? We're gonna slow this way down. Oh, you can't play fast? We're gonna play really, really fast. 100%. Know thy enemy, and oh, so JC now, he tries to turn the tables, but a little trap had kind of been set because Chad Boucher and, and Tyler had completely abandoned their their front position to move back. Tyler is now at the 50 yard line on the D side and then Chad's back at the wedge. And so, you know, feeling a little free, JC makes that move up there and gets caught. And now Tyler's on the attack. He's past the 50 yard line and pushing the issue yeah. here on Edmonton Impact. Four on two, Impact's a little bit too defensive and now pays for it. With Tyler getting one kill and turning a four on two into a three on two. And now with Houston Heat in better field position, although they are down a body. If Tyler or Chad can get another kill here, they'll turn this into a two on two. Field position base, they'll probably win this point. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, and this is just really, this is the longest point we've seen out here today. Down to uh, two minutes and 39 seconds left. And this might be a glimpse into Sunday right now. Yeah, so, and I mean, no one, I was gonna say for a second, no one had shot a ball for a little <laughs> bit here. I think it was a time, field, field timeout. Tyler battling across the field. How much time left, Maddie? 217. Ooh, one point game, Matt. One point game. Ooh. Tyler on your screen right now. That is our D side cam. Tyler's got the ball. Uh, he's got one gun on him. Jarula has just been posted up, gunfighting for a while. I mean, pain has got to be an issue for everyone right now at this longest point we've seen out here today. Cramping has to be an issue for everybody. Yeah, they're definitely trying to keep us on schedule. <laughs> Long points equal quick games. And this is the longest point by far we've seen out here today. I was going to probably end up being a. We're in point four. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, maybe one more point after this. This could be the point. The way could it's going, going this could know. be the point. Really depends on who wins it, though, because if, if he takes this one and it's tied, if it goes down to the very nitty gritty, we'll probably see an overtime point. And uh, if Impact takes it, then just based on the situation, then we'll probably. Oh, and the Tyler Armour wins a gunfight. Darula had made his way over to the tower, uh, the tower, and he gets taken out. So Tyler clocks in, gunfight win. They're left handed. Now he's going to try to eat up Nick Laval. Nick Laval is going to try to stop that attack. Tyler onto their side. He's into their D3. Chad's got to do clock in here. Catch Mouse. Ooh, Mouse trying to make them. a big move. Oh, that was yeah, just a them. great job by Chad. Oh, Boucher. Chad George is still alive. Yeah, Chad George has been alive this whole game, man. He's just he's gun fighting from that they box for a long time. This more. But do they have the time here? That's Under a minute. Can they finish off Nick Laval? And Tyler Harmon's going to drop the hammer. Beautiful point. Unbelievable, man. Tyler Harmon, Chad Boucher started this off by running to the 50, essentially off the break. And then they played a very diverse game. Did multiple moves. Uh, Tyler has to get out over to the D side and take over the attack with Ronnie dying early. And then, you know, Chad staying alive that whole time. And then also the other Chad, Chad George, he played on an island on the snake side and stayed alive in gunfights the entire time. That was a hell of a point there for Houston. He can tie this one up two to two. Momentum shifter too. Well, and you could say, okay, yeah, this doesn't really mean anything because it's just for seeding, but it does mean something because it always means it. You're, those but, are your friends, man. And Heat has got has, Impact has got the better Heat a little bit this year. Now, yeah, Heat's beat Impact as well, but Impact's round up two wins. Heat without a win this year. Let's check in again <laughs> with Lauren Kelly. Thanks, Maddie. You were talking about the bleachers a couple points ago and how it's Friday and they're already filling up. This is something I've actually heard both Heat and Dynasty already talking about and preemptively planning for. They have experienced it before at World Cup. The bleachers get extremely energetic and loud and it causes communication to break down on the field. So it's something they have to plan for. Dynasty with a little bit different break out there. They were trying to figure out something with their two center guns. They had five guns up off the break. I wonder. Heavy pocket. Yeah, I wonder how you, I mean, that's kind of a tough deal. It was going to get crazy on Sunday. You might not be able to hear as well. But, yeah, man, it's World Cup. That's what it's all about. So, decent break for both squads. Looks like a five on five break. I don't see any bodies walking off. A little bit better field position here for the Tauntauns. They are, they are at a two point deficit here with 8.50 on the clock. Blake Yarbrough making the move to the wing on the snake side. Looking to cut down the move to the outside. And he gets his guy. Gets there just in time. Shoots the guy. Notices that he shoots the guy. So releases. His mirror releases. Blake gets caught. Lucky he didn't get a penalty there. Oh, sorry. He did get a penalty there. Yeah, Blake, that was uh, a little sloppy, Bubba. So Dynasty with three now against Tauntaun's two. I mean, four, sorry. Off the penalty with Blake Yarbrough. Yeah, it pulls out Archie. It's always a huge loss anytime Archie's not on the field. And then Tauntaun's going to go right to this 50. The door is slightly open here for the Tauntauns if they can make the most of it. Oh, but here comes Dynasty pushing up. Oh, getting taken out. Urena trying to get into D4. Ends up getting clipped. And then little retreat here from the Tauntauns to get back to that back center. Definitely they have the big advantage right now. Yeah, four and two, Maddie. Here comes a move in the center, though. Alex Frazier comes through, he drops the hammer, one. and he one. stays alive, Rich. Yeah, can he get another? Alex Frazier here, left-hand corner of your screen, still oh, alive. got him. Finally getting pinched. Marcelo, though, in that chaos, as he always does, makes it into a, a good position outside wide to spread the field, just in case. Three on one now, Matt. Hey, man, I got a bottle of whiskey and some money to give to the defensive player of the event. And He's gonna give it to Marcelo wouldn't now. surprise me <laughs> if I ended up giving it to Marcelo. If we had this award to give to that that specific human, Marcelo would have already won it a bunch of times. Woody so. hides better. 
Well, survivability in his position comes at a gigantic premium, man. Like, if you can't play the position of Marcelo plays, if you can't have off the chart survivability, because he has to be alive to make these timing moves, to pull off these low body situations. You know, and he shoots bodies on the break, too. So, yeah, man, it's win, win, win. part of the mix of the, of, uh, the glorious mix of the wins here. The, the secret of the win has been Marcelo's lights out play for the past couple seasons here for Dynasty. Oh, uh, gets, gets caught. How much he could do, though, was catching a lot of yeah. fire from there. It was just him. It was, it was three on one. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, so. yeah, no, I kid Marcel a lot because he has that defensive style, but obviously he's an amazing paintball player. And it takes a lot of courage to buck the trends. You know, a lot of people like to play that aggressive, fast-paced style. It's not easy to be I just find it cool. funny that, you know, you, uh, because, you know, not the fastest guy in the world, not the smallest guy in the faster world. Faster than you. You No, you were never faster Shh, than me. That easily is another, faster than another lie. Ask anybody. You have never one time in the history of your life, and maybe in a dream, if you beat me in a <laughs> race in it. your dreams, Stop you should have woke up and apologized. That would never happen. Anyway, uh, point uh, I'm trying to make here. Thank you, you brought this. Loud. You brought this upon yourself. <laughs> thank you. Brought you. This uh, it's is gonna be a really long weekend, guys. <laughs> you could bring Rich another coffee; he would greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, point I'm trying to make, right, is that you, as you were, became a paintball hero. Why? Because you shot bodies on the break, had a good. You, had a, you were a defensive cleanup guy on a team full of like crazy young lions running around, right? Marcelo's kind of that same guy. He came up as a young lion playing crazy offense. He's developed this insanely high level, probably the highest level at that style. And you, that's worth its weight in gold, man. I, I agree. You're right. Marcelo and I both basically are the same as an athlete. <laughs> I could not argue that any, any, any. Uh, Attack drop the first tackle on the D side, Manny. Yeah, body coming off as Houston Heat pushing the issue here. Tied up, trying to steal this win. 37 seconds left. I like this for Houston Heat. I think this gives them their, their best chance for a victory against Impact. I agree with you, Rich. They, and they've done this. This is one of the things that Heat likes to do. They like to get their opponents on the ropes. They get the momentum, and then they start pushing heavy and aggressive uh, just when you think they're going to go maybe go, ah, let's just burn this clock off. And no, they just send crazy, flying, insane, aggressive moves. And it's like Matt Jackson's going to get caught here. Tyler pushing the issue in the center. He cuts through the gap. And here comes Kotze Fedorov trailing right behind him. Tyler goes through. Fedorov goes through. Two bodies come off. And here comes Ryan Moorhead. He's going to dunk on uh, Cornell. And they get the point. And they get the point with just two seconds left. And it looks like Houston Heat is going to steal the win here from Edmonton Impact in this seeding round between the top four teams. The thumbs up as both Chad George was in there as well, too. Great job by Ryan Moorhead, former World Cup MVP uh, just a few years ago. When Houston Heat came out of the wild card round, had to win four games to win the World Cup, and they were able to do it. Not going to be the story for them here as they get the buy into the top eight, but regardless, beautiful little performance there from Houston Heat to close that game out. Unbelievable, man. That was a great match. Thank you, both teams. Very entertaining to watch, and I wish I could be in those meetings tonight just to listen to what, was, what they were going to talk about. Ooh, little bit of a bad start. So I didn't see it. I was looking at Heat on the breakout. So a little bit of a bad start there for, I think that was Axel. And then that cost him that body. And then here came the close. Look at this. You see Tyler go through, and then Fedorov trailed right behind him. And then Moorhead was the third attacker. Chad George was also alive. Jumping back in with Dynasty, one point lead. 6.40 to go here as Oliver Lang's going to push up off the break and get to that center 50. It's probing. Oliver's looking for it. It's going back and forth, very proactive. Sets the trap, maybe, yeah, like and then comes there. back. He kind of went up there, made his presence known, and then comes right back to the wedge. Nobody bites on it, though. Tauntauns, ooh, here comes the bite. All right, they're going to try to come through and shoot out Oliver. Does he get the trade? Oliver's begging for the penalty. I don't think he's going to get it. Ollie, be careful. Be careful. Oh, they get Oliver on the penalty. So the tough thing about that is Oliver may have had a legitimate gripe on he that did, penalty. They got a red on the other side. Oh, OK. All right. So actually, that's not a bad trade. Oliver pled his case, but he got a penalty for pleading his case. And then they get a major penalty assessed on the Tauntaun. So he won the argument, and Dynasty's and probably going to win the point. Yeah, he won the war, lost the battle. But it was, yeah, 100%. But it was interesting. They went up there and set the trap. And I was thinking, oh, man, it didn't look like they uh, bit on the trap for a bit. But they did. Oh, they bit. And then here, bit and here comes Dalton trying to finish things off. Dog and he's got Alex Frazee behind him, and here comes Ryan Greenspan. He's got a couple, got another body to work out. They're beg Ryan's begging for a penalty for the Tauntauns and not going to get it. But well, Oliver's argument did it. It did. Uh, it landed. 
and it yeah. worked out for him. What I found interesting is the referee that called the penalty was behind the player that referee that was called the penalty on. Yeah, so we got, hopefully in our master replay, guy Joe down here lining us up. So here comes the run through. So there's Oliver, definitely, okay, so you see, boom, shoots him right there. So that is definitely a penalty. Shoots him right there, continues to go through, and then puts the ball on Oliver. Oliver screaming bloody mercy at the ref. He's like, no, that guy played on, and he was right, but he ends up getting in his own yeah, penalty. Once you shot that, you gotta lead the field whether you shot that guy or and not. And that's the issue, right? So Oliver's gonna end up getting the one, uh, the one for one here by pleading his case after he was hit. But because that player was shot, played on, and shot another player, the major's drawn. So interesting, right? He wins the argument, like you said, he loses the battle but wins the war there. So it was still, it was a great play by Oliver. Go up, set the trap, come back. That's a crafty move by the veteran Oliver Lang right there on his return tournament after six years of not playing high level paintball competition. So San Diego Dynasty up by two on the Toulouse Tauntauns. You had a pretty impressive game, a look, good look and a loss against the Impact. And it's just a new, a new look for a, a top level, the, the best team in Europe right now. The Tauntauns are the best team in Europe. And this is their new look. I mean, it's a legendary squad, been around for like three different incarnations of this team. I mean, we played against the Tauntauns back in the day. And then uh, then they had a decent run, mid-2000s or uh, early you know, teens. Before they got shot, caught shooting two, 350. It was like 370, but whatever. 370, whatever. No, but that was, uh, yeah, I think Dave Pando actually still has that gun. That gun's probably worth a lot of money. That was let's, like five guns. Let's, uh, let's check in again with Lauren Kelly. Thanks, I was in the impact pits after he took that win. They were really talking about how they need to get Alex Goldman doing what he does best on the snake side. Alex said that every time he tried to wrap, Chad George was right there stopping him. So they know that's one thing they need to focus on when they rewatch the tape tonight. And that's, I mean, that's, yeah, exactly, Lauren. I mean, that's the situation for Dynasty, the Tauntauns, Heat, and Impact is that they're all into the money round. They're in the top eight no matter what. They're waiting for the practice. They're waiting, exactly. They're waiting for the top four. But Who what intensity are you bringing to practice? Yeah. How are you looking at these games? Who what are you learning from them? them? What wars are you going to be in? And how are you going to learn those lessons? It's a big question right now for these top four teams because they've never, no one's really ever been in this situation before. Heavy guns up for Dynasty here. The two-point lead. Five minutes left. Does it produce a kill? It doesn't look like it does. Five on five, yeah, five on five break. Oh, they immediately get a top. kill though. Yeah. Over the the top question away. I'm asking myself is, where'd you put that bottle of whiskey? I got it right here. Okay, thank you. I can't drink any of it. Okay. Coward. I did uh, request a bottle of whiskey from Robbie, but it hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> but. A little too early to be getting into whiskey. So cool. five minutes left to go here. And we're looking at the Tauntauns here on the blue side, on your screen, full complement of Dynasty out there. Got a one-body advantage. Every guy in Dynasty is just pumping his gun. You look at the Tauntauns, two or three guys have their guns down, kind of looking around for shots or kind of deciding what to do. Dynasty makes that little bump from the lay-down wedge to the little Dorito. Yeah, it's good to see Dalton healthy. Head yeah, back over sure. there with that hamstring injury he's been dealing with. I really enjoy watching him play. I'm so happy we have a camera on the Dorito side now. Ryan trying to set that trap again, but Dalton's like, you know, I'm just gonna go past the 50 on their side. You're not putting enough pressure on me. And yeah. Kill one, Dalton. Off that, Archie makes the move. Off that, Ryan makes the move. Oh, Ryan gets one. Ryan gets team killed. Dalton gets, does not get team killed. He's all right. <laughs> San Diego Dynasty on a little bit of a roll here. Archie apologizing for shooting Ryan. But you know what, Archie, a kill's a kill. It's okay, because I, I think that Ryan shot Archie in like event two, so it's just a, it's just to go back and forth. So there's like a beef between them now, and they're going back and forth, that's what you're saying? Well, we had we mic'd up Ryan, and it, it, at that event, anyone we mic'd up seemed to have a really good game, but it was pretty funny, because he was having a good game, but he did shoot, I think it was Archie, he's like, but he admit, admitted it, hey, I'm sorry, oh my bad, that was my bad, I, my that was me. That was me, if you're wondering who shot you, that was me. Also, big shout out to Carbon, sponsor of the Golden Barrel. The MVP is going to be taken home. Got the SE custom jerseys, and you can see the 3D renderings. And if you want to learn more, head over to carbonpaintball.com. That's C-R-B-N paintball.com. And people that work behind the scenes creating the Carbon product line, working for other companies for years, decided to do it themselves. Started with an amazing protective gear lineup, and have just been slowly but surely adding uh, to their you know, product line coming out that new goggle they just dropped recently as well too but and a big you know supporter of a lot of teams out there and coveted golden barrel 500 bucks for bunker kings also at stake 
We got money from McKinley Mosley and Associates for a move of the tournament. The MVP is also going to be getting a custom Lux courtesy of uh, uh, Learwright XT, new company where you can send uh, song lyrics in your memes to your friends. And timeout being called. Also, we just it's just it's so awesome how all these companies have just stepped up to try to award these players. And all this is this is all we're not taking a cut of this. This is going to uh, speak this to is yourself, going, bro. I'm getting some of that whiskey. <laughs> it's going to the players. They deserve it. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I'm just saying I deserve a little whiskey too. That's all I'm saying. Hey, I'll hook you up. And yeah, if you are in need of a lawyer to represent you in a property claim. Against your insurance company, these these are your people right here. McKinley Mosley and Associates, that's the number, 844-662-7552. I know had a couple hurricanes in Florida, so yeah, if you need some help, these are your people. Everyone needs a good lawyer. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably pretty good timing with, everyone with the storm. Needs, everyone needs a good lawyer. Especially in our family. Just never I mean, has been you, a property issue You are issue from yet. a death row. It hasn't been a property issue yet, but I'm assuming it'll come up. Dynasty breaking out from the blue side. Eventually, Tauntauns will be coming out and breaking out from the red side. Tauntauns don't look bad, Maddie, but they just keep doing kind of the same thing over and over, and they're not really changing back and forth between. You can't tell if they're playing offense or defense. It looks like they're just playing kind of the same game plan, same style over and over and over. For us, I haven't seen a lot of the Tauntauns the past couple of years, right? A bunch of new players for people. I mean, I've been watching the Tauntauns for 20 years, but. And I agree, they definitely don't look bad at all. And, but I just, are they red? It's the same thing with the Lucky 15s, and now we're gonna see Paris Camp Carnage in a little bit. I'm looking forward to see that. Different story with them, because that roster, we'll see who is actually here, but our roster's been pretty core for a while. Back in a dynasty, jumping back in here, the Senorina up the gut this time. Marcelo's at the tower, and doesn't look like anyone's come off for dynasty. Not much of a risk on the snake side. They send just Archie over here, and he's gonna be at that back box. Five on five for both teams. Neither team with a significant advantage. Mikey is up in the 50, but it's a pretty easy 50 to get to. Tauntauns are in the wing. Tauntauns are looking to like lock down the snake side. Dynasty looking to lock down the Drito side. Dynasty with the juice box back center of the tower. Mike in the center wing, Drito corner. Tauntauns with juice box back center, center wing. Snake wing and Dorito two now releasing to the next Dorito. Let's see if Mikey's got that gap. There's only three minutes left here. Tauntauns are looking at a point a minute, so gonna have to start pushing the issue here shortly. Great fill out to the corner there. Poor containment on Dynasty, which you almost never hear or say. Should have had that easy kill him going out there. They should have two guys on that gap. Well, it is pretty stock to keep uh, your guns D side way because that's the those are the mostly the easier moves and it's a little bit harder over here on the snake side so maybe they weren't expecting that guy to make that big bold move all the way out wide but got to kind of expect some unexpected things when there's two minute and 30 seconds left and uh, and your opponents are down three points yeah well and it's such an easy spot to control right there's two or three spots out there that you could just sit there and shoot the cut like we were talking about earlier you don't have to gunfight anybody you're literally just pumping the gap so when I don't see anybody pumping that gap, I know someone's drop, dropping a job. Likes getting pressure in the middle. Referee saying he's okay, but he wants the referee to come in and check him. And he's eliminated. So yeah, Blake Garber coming off. Urena's still alive there, right hand side of your screen at the 50 yard line. He's gonna switch his gun towards the snake side right now. Yeah, Mike is not, looks like he doesn't know exactly. Oh, Archie's taking the walk, Matt. Yeah, a couple deaths gonna open the door for the Tauntauns, which just, but the problem is time, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean Dynasties, they've already put up five points. As the Tauntauns, the Tauntauns this one. Well, the Tauntauns lose a body from that D side. They're gonna trade out with Urena, and Urena put a bunch of extra balls on Urena's 89 right there. Yeah, yeah penalty assessed on Mikey. Line. Mikey looking up shocked, like he's just completely surprised he got that penalty. I mean, he did put an extra four or five on that guy, so. Uh, I get why that penalty was thrown. Not a fan of those types of penalties, but yeah. don't, it's not going to hurt Dynasty a ton. No. Mikey does always kind of ride that edge, though. But he's their bruiser. I mean, your bruisers yeah, have to ride talk that to edge. Me about it. I'm not throwing penalties, bro. I'm just commenting on it. I apologize if it offends. Well, you were just saying something I, I kind of didn't agree with. So mm -hmm. I, was, you know, I know you like to argue. I was just trying to see if you wanted to argue for a little. Not bit. at all. Not at all. I'd like to go lay on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a few more hours before that's going to happen, buddy. <laughs> 
Skies are starting to darken a little bit out here, Rich. You notice this? Yeah. I thought we got I rid of the it's dark in the morning when we get here, and it's dark at night when we leave here. Yeah. It's a lot of darkness. I'm talking more about the uh, dark clouds mm -hmm. off in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, those are ominous clouds too, aren't they? Like they got that dark kind of scary look. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, let's get a look here at this arena penalty because, I mean, that's on the edge. I, I get why the penalty was thrown. Okay, so here comes the Tauntauns. They catch each other. Coming. Yeah, he knows so they, coming. they shoot each other right now. Tauntauns player puts his gun down, and Mikey just keeps blasting. One, two, Mikey three, four, three five. And force three steps and five yeah. shots. I mean, that's, Mikey, you're going to get a penalty every time that happens, man. I mean, not, not only that. We don't but, like it, but yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and he was playing well up there, too. Yeah, play great. I'm not even that mad at that instance. It wasn't, based even, that, on the it wasn't even that bad. I think that's one of those accumulative. You know, they've seen him do that 10 times before. So, like, you know what? This is the 11th time you've done it. We're going to go ahead and give you a penalty. It did look a little worse in slow-mo than it did in person, but he did keep his gun up for that extra beat. So, you know, and that extra beat in live time is three, four shots, right? And, yeah, I mean, Ooh. and also his opponent submitted while he kept putting it on him. And if those guys had just kind of diced each other up, maybe we wouldn't. They would just say, "Hey, get I'm off like, the field." I like though that the guy didn't beg for the call. The guy just took his lumps and walked off the field. Let the referees do their thing instead of like you know every every time everybody gets shot now it's the <gasps> hand to the ref. What up, bro? Where's my call, man? Yeah, I just I'm glad it just hasn't devolved into uh, like the NBA where there's just flopping happening and everyone just gets barely or like, or soccer football. where they get football. No, it happens in the NBA too where they just barely get touched and they just flop on the ground. <laughs> Thank God. So let's go down to Lauren Kelly. Thanks. Dynasty is not feeling the heat too much yet. They do still have that point advantage, but coming off the field, Oliver Lang said they're just not playing tight enough in their bunkers. They're getting shot out of their bunkers. He said he doesn't think Tauntauns are going anywhere. Dynasty just needs to clean it up a bit. And this is what they're trying to do, right? They're trying to clean it up. Thank you, Lauren. Is Yeah, these that's what these games are for, trying to clean it up. You're about to go to battle on Sunday with a team that was one of the top four out of 20. So that team's going to be warmed up, and they will have been through some wars. So ideally, you would like to go through some wars and figure things out. So, yeah, Olaine getting the spin out here with his, with his group. They're up by two points with 42 seconds left, and he goes to the wedge off the break. Good, really solid positions here for Dynasty. Uh, not a ton of a risk, but just in good positions to c control these lanes. They can't watch that move to the wall, though. So uh, so Tauntauns are going to get there, but now he has to get past this zone. He's going to try. They, he, Tauntauns lose the Drew player, Matty. Attack on the Drew side. I like the way the Tauntauns player is playing up the middle. Very proactive. Really looking for kills. Well, the only two guns looking D side is Oliver and Alex. So it was either Oliver or Alex that got that kill on the D side. And then it looks like Greenspan's going to take the walk. Ooh, uh-oh. Greenspan takes the walk. Arturo. Another body takes the walk. Arturo. Oliver comes. Uh, well, Oliver comes through. Oliver comes through to bunker out the player for the Tauntauns as time expired. He didn't need to do that. Uh, in the sense, he could have just let time expire from his bunker and not got riddled. But he wanted to go get some. So, a little tip of the hat to Olang right there. A little Olang action. Dynasty in general, though, playing absolutely outstanding. Everyone's everyone's getting spins. Damien got a spin out there in that last one. So, you know, Kevin Brett there trying to keep everybody fresh, see who his guys are going to be on Sunday. Running essentially two lines with some alternates here, it looked like. But, yeah, a lot of notable good things just happened for Dynasty today. They beat Heat. They just took down the Tauntauns. Heat already defeated Impact, and that is...